right, this is the first of two videos. We'll talk about lesson five, two, and that is going to be solving polynomial equations algebraically. And a lot of this is going to do with factoring. Right? Now, this starts here with the description of prime polynomials. Prime polynomials are ones that uh, don't really factor at all. And we'll have an example of that. But most of them are going to factor. And the book has a little factor guide here. And this is, this is in the book as well. All right. And I drew that big, thick black line because above that line, and bullet line are kind of different to me. You're always going to look for a greatest common factor. You always want to look for that every problem because it, it's either going to be all you do or it's at least going to simplify or make the problem easier to work with. And so here they took out the 2AB and have this left. Now with what's left, you might still have more to do. There's two terms left, and so now we would look at this box. With two terms, is there is it a difference of two squares? Is it a sum of two cubes, or is it a difference of two cubes? If it's one of those three things, I have to do more. Right? Also, uh, this, this one is the one we're most used to. All right? That's happened the most. It's going to happen the most, as you say, whereas these two are new for us. If it's got three parts to it, all right, even either, either just on its own it has three parts or after you take out the greatest common factor it has three parts, all right? You want to really come down here and check the, or, or factor the trinomial. If you remember perfect square trinomials, awesome. It'll save you some time. If not, make sure you just look for a general trinomial. Quick review, what, is, what does that mean, general trinomial? We want numbers that multiply to make that last number, but add up to make the middle number. And so this one would be 2 and 3. And so that would be factoring. A, that's the general trinomial factoring. And then grouping, you you probably did before, like in algebra class. We haven't done it recently. So we'll review that today um, with you. And so that is both. I want to put both stars. It's, it's both going to be important. And it's kind of new. Okay. And so make sure you write these two rules down. These are the completely new ones. Um, completely new ones. And you want to have these rules. I don't expect you have them memorized on the test. They'll be there. But on a quiz or a homework, you want to have them written down somewhere. And so if you realize it's A cubed plus B cubed, um, then, you, then you just switch it from A cubed to B cubed. You switch it into... You know, this stuff right here. If it's a cubed minus b cubed, you can switch it into this stuff right here. And so you need to have these formulas, these rules. Now, on your calculator, if you don't realize it already, your calculators all have the ability to do a cube root. And so, like, if you do the cube root of 27, it would tell you the answer is 3. And that's how you check to see if the numbers here are perfect cubes. And so for the first one, I'm just going to rewrite it as x to the third. That would make x cubed. And that means a here is just x plus 3 to the third. And so b here is just 3. And so it's a sum of two cubes. And so a is x, b is 3. I'm going to plug into this uh, formula. And so it's just going to be x plus 3. A squared is X squared minus AB is X times 3, which is 3X, plus B squared, which is 9. Over here, anytime the, the exponent is divisible by 3, then it is a perfect cube. In this case, Y squared to the third power is y to the sixth. If I did the cube root of 125, I would find out it's 5. And so this one fits difference of two cubes. I'm going to use this formula. a is y squared 
B is 5. And so let's use a different color. And so this one would be Y squared. A is Y squared minus B is just 5. And then A squared. A squared. Well, A is Y squared. So Y squared times Y squared is Y to the 4th. Right? Plus a times b, y squared times 5 is 5y squared. Plus b squared, b is 5, 5 times 5, 25. Because of a lack of room, I'm not going to work out all of this third example, but I would point out here, it doesn't look like it's a perfect cube, and it isn't a perfect cube right now, but I always need to start by checking for a greatest common factor. x goes into both things. So I want to do this first, and now it is a perfect cube, and I can work it out. And I actually work it out for you here using the chart. So we took, we used the first step. We factored out the greatest common factor. We have two things left, so two terms left, which means is it a difference of squares? Well, it's not a difference of anything. So the only thing it could be is a sum. Is it a sum of two cubes? Well, yes, it is. 64 breaks down to 4, x cubed to the to is x, y cubed breaks down to y. So I plug it into my uh, formula that they have for the sum of two cubes. I remember the greatest common factor stays out front, and I have my answer. Here, 8 breaks down to 2x to the third, plus 125 breaks down to 5y, now 12th, so it's going to be 4, because 4 times 3 makes 12. And so then using that rule, going back, my rule is a cubed plus b cubed equals a plus b, a squared minus ab plus b squared. That's why you need to have it written down, because I don't expect you to have it memorized. So a is 2x, b is 5y to the 4th. So 2x plus 5y to the 4th. And then a squared, 2x times 2x is 4x squared minus ab times these two together, 10xy to the 4th plus b squared. 5 times 5 is 25y to the 4th times y to the 4th is y to the 8th. What is the first thing I have to do here? What's the first thing I should do anytime? I should always check for the greatest common factor. And so two goes into both things. Oh. Two goes into both things. X goes into both things. X squared goes into both things. So this one becomes 27. X to the third, because 2 times 27 makes 54. X squared times X to the third makes X to the fifth. Minus 64, Y to the third. And so this becomes 3X to the third. And this becomes 4Y to the third. I got to remember my rule. A cubed minus B cubed. The rule was A minus B. And then a squared plus a b my uh, plus b squared. Sorry. So you gotta have those rules written down somewhere you can find them. The two x squared just stays out front. Then a plus b is three x. I'm sorry. A minus b is three x minus four y. A squared three x times three x is nine x squared. Plus 3 times 4 is 12. X times Y is just XY. Plus B squared. 4 times 4 is 16. Y times Y is Y squared. Check for greatest common factor. I don't see one. Is it a perfect cube? Well, the letters are perfect cubes. 27 is a perfect cube. Is 10 a perfect cube? Cube root of 10. Do the calculators. Cube root of 10 work out to a nice integer. It's like 2 point something, 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 something. No, no, it's not pretty. So what do I write if it doesn't simplify, doesn't greatest? There is no way to break it down more. I 
right prime. All right, last part of this video is going to be factoring by grouping. When there isn't a greatest common factor, um, and usually for us it's when there's four, and so the way I would teach this in algebra uh, was always like you want to split it up right here. So there's four parts. Oops, I had that going right too. There's four parts. I want to split it up. And so there's no greatest common factor that goes into all four parts, but... If I can split it in the middle and there's greatest common factor to the front half and to the second half, we'll give it a try. And so I take out x squared, I get x squared, and I get x minus 3. I take out 5, all right? Or I should say I take out negative 5 because I wanted to be positive x. I take out negative 5, I get positive x minus 3. You want to make these two the same. All right. These two are the same, so that means you can group together. So you just put this one and this one together in front, and that's how we write our final answer down there at the bottom. Let's look at an example like this. This is a this is as massive an example as you could get. All right. And so they have the original expression. Nothing goes into all six parts and so they split it up um, after they first move things together to have greatest common factors so they moved the parts around all right they moved all the parts with x squareds over here and they move all the parts with y's over here and then they go okay if i take the seven x squared out i get this left over 7 times 2 is 14, 7 times 4, 7 times 5. Over here, I take the 4y out. 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 5 is 20. All right, take all that stuff out. These parts now are the same, so they can group together and have the final answer. All right. Give this a try, page 267, 1 through 8 all. Let me know um, if I can help.